We are back. All right. My first guest now. My uh, first guest tonight is a very accomplished. He is a composer, a pianist, or pianist, we'll find out what the correct term is, conductor, and a music historian who has, for the third time, written, this is the book here, believe it or not. Oh, we're talking, we're talking book. Baker's, Baker's biographical, biographical, <laughs> whoopee, dictionary of musicians. Uh, he's an amusing gentleman, doesn't take his work too seriously, although we're going to. Would you welcome Nicholas Slonimsky. <laughs> Yes, we nice. know that we are kindred spirits because we are both were born on Fridays. Is that a fact? Absolutely. I, I was born on a Friday. Well, I won't tell you when because it would degrade my appearance yeah. and my masculinity and <laughs> my... Said, but you were born on Friday. And I found, found it out through psychic methods. You know, I don't know exactly what day I was born on. I know the year and the date. I, uh, 23rd. 23rd of October. Of October. Yeah. I won't tell you no, don't the you. year because, yeah, you know, because you're my masculinity. Still, still young. <laughs> but it was a Friday. I'll keep your secret if you keep mine. Uh, yes. No. Well, it was a Friday, and I was born on a Friday. Well, we do have something in common. Did oh, I pronounce your name right? Slonimsky? Absolutely wonderful. Slow as in slowly, nim as in nimble, nimble. and ski as in skiing. Some people call <laughs> me call me Slominski, which I hate because I had have, have nothing to do with the Minsky burlesque. That's right. Yeah. And they always confuse me with, yes. with so that. So it's Slonimsky. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Do you, uh, do you watch, our, watch our show occasionally? Do you like the... Occasionally? What do you show? mean occasionally? Religiously. Do you really? Absolutely. Well, that's nice. Because after all, I want to learn how to be funny. Huh? Because basically, I'm a stand-up comedian. <laughs> this is just a, this is a hobby, huh? This is a hobby. I mean, it's just 2,577 pages. You want to be a stand-up comedian? That's what I wanted to be when I was 10 years old. But then it didn't work out that way, so I... Uh, you are not even a stand-up comedian. You are a sit-down comedian. <laughs> well, you see, I like it. I, I do both. I stand up for a while, then I sit down. Yes. Well. Did you ever? Did you ever work professionally or in, uh, work in front of an audience where you did comedy? Oh boy, I did nothing but comedy. Yeah. I mean, I would uh, announce something very serious, and then I would look at the audience and say, "My God, I'd better change my program." Mm -hmm. And it was all comedy. Yeah. Now this is the third time you put this book together. Absolutely. And it's really a who's who of. Um, Music um, both alive and uh, deceased. Yes, deceased, mostly deceased. You see, they die very quickly. I have a, <laughs> I have a whole list of stiffs. Whole list of stiffs? Yes. <laughs> and so they come up and they die. Unfortunately, the wrong people die. What, what do you mean by that? I mean, some people ought to die, but they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can't hold that against them, you know. I know, but I mean, this is uh, uncomfortable, you know, for to edit a book and not know who is who. But you've been a music lover, obviously, all of your life. Yes. I mean, I, I was a, a certified genius at the age of four, so my mother told me. Is that right? Yes. But then, of course, I grew up and I found that the world was not at my feet. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I was not a certified genius. Oh. I opened, this, I opened this up quickly and turned to, to Doc Severinsen. You've got Doc Severinsen in here? Of course. This, this covers a, a jazz, contemporary, a classical, Co rock and roll. Yeah, what do you think of rock and roll? Rock and roll, of course, rock and roll. I mean, they are terrific. Mm -hmm. You see, I admire them. I envy them. Mm -hmm. And then you know what happened. It turned out that they envied me because I wrote a book that I don't believe that anybody would touch. It was called Thesaurus of Scales and Melodic Patterns. And lo and behold, I found out that John Coltrane and Frank Zappa and everybody was studying as if it was serious. Right. You see, I meant it... <laughs> I meant it as a big joke. And so all of a sudden... Uh, they're reading this as it's... They're reading it and they're studying it. 
And so Frank Zappa invited me to be his soloist. Now, I never performed with a jazz band, and then I said to myself, what can I lose? Right. So I said, okay, I will, I, I will be your soloist. He said, what do I do? He said, you play the electric piano. I said, I never played the electric piano in my life. And then I said to myself, what can I lose? That's right. <laughs> and so, so uh, you know, usually my audience is when I perform by myself, numbers from 13 to 17. But this time I had 5,671 people in the audience and they all screamed, you know, when I came in and they screamed and, and yelled when I left. Now, <laughs> <laughs> that could be good or bad. Yes, uh, I know. Let me, let me interrupt us a second here. We have to do a commercial, then we'll come back and talk some more. Oh, yes, I, I've done some commercials, too. Okay, good. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. All right. We are... Okay, good. We are talking with Mr. Nicholas Slonimsky about this... What is this... <laughs> what does this book weigh? This is about the heaviest book I've ever seen. Eight and a half pounds. Eight and a half pounds. So it's like a coffee table. It is a coffee table. It's not a oh, coffee yes. table book. If you have coffee. Yeah. We're talking about musicians. What do you think of some of the... Uh, Michael... Uh, Michael Jackson, Prince... Oh, well, they are great musicians. They make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They make... <laughs> <laughs> that's your definition of a great musician, one who makes a well, lot of money? Of course. That's why I'm not a great musician, I regret to say. Uh -huh. Even though my friends tell me that I'm a great musician because they are afraid I would commit suicide. Really? <laughs> but I'm not a suicidal type. I drive people to suicide, but not the other <laughs> Somebody said you have what is called an ambidextrous brain? Is that, is well, that... I have two separate hemispheres. Well, we this all do, the right we? I mean... Oh, you do? Oh, I'm I think. Sorry. <laughs> I that... Don't we all have two? No, but, well, I thought, what well, you see, I'm a, I have a super-induced schizophrenia. Uh -huh. That means that I can operate with my right uh, brain separately from my left brain. And that enables me, for instance, to conduct two different times in modern music. You know, for instance, five against two. Now, so far, I haven't found a single person, musician or non-musician, who could do it. Now, Could you uh, explain to me what that means? Uh, well, that means, you see, half of the orchestra has five, eight. One, right. two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Those people, of course, understand what it is. I mean, I don't mean to imply that you don't understand. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. And the other half of the orchestra has two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Now, what am I to do to conduct an orchestra when, when they have different tempi? So I do this. I conduct five with my right hand and two with my left hand, like this. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Now try this. <laughs> uh, That's my my <laughs> stomach is not uh, exactly suitable for such exercise. Yeah. <laughs> May I ask how old you are? Somebody told me I would be rather surprised, and I... Well, you see, I would put it this way. Find another person in your audience who was born in the 19th century. You are she older was... than 86? 86 is nothing. <laughs> well, we are in the 19th century, aren't we? No, we're in, we're in the no, 20th century. In the 20th century. Uh, it starts to go, century. yes. <laughs> usually starts with watching hummingbirds, and then you... Know. Uh, anybody born here in the 19th century? All right. Nobody. 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 Except George Burns, but he's not here. Now, George, George Burns is 90 years old. Yes. So, uh, subtract 90 from 1986, what do you get? 1986? 1986 minus what? 90. Now... <laughs> computer for that. 19, well, you, you were born in 1896? That's George Burns. And you're older than George Burns? Well, of course, he's just a kid. 
How now, are you putting me on? Uh, are you over 90? Well, 90. I celebrated my 90th birthday long ago. I got a wonderful reception, and uh, I got this as a present. Oh, well, that's a nice birthday present. Yes. That was for my 92nd birthday. You're 92? I was 92 last April 27th. My eyesight is 2020, 20 and my hearing is 4040, or whatever the number is. Yeah, well, it's well, remarkable. Can he even hear, hear very, very uh, high notes. Let your trumpet play, play for me the high F sharp, and I'll tell him it's a high F sharp. You, see, you can tell whatever note it is? Oh, yeah. Hit a, hit a high Go note. Ahead, uh, no, well, high F sharp, but they do also. <laughs> you don't want to try this? What do you want to hear? Any kind. Just one note, and I'll tell you what it is. Yeah. That's simple. That's C. Mm. High C. <laughs> close enough. <laughs> what do you mean, close oh, enough? You said, what do you mean, close enough? It's B. Well, it, it, if was, it's it B, was C then sharp. Then what? It was C sharp. Professor. D sharp it wasn't. Oh. No. No, no, no. Nicholas says it wasn't a D sharp. It's not a D no, sharp. No, no, no. It's a C. You play a D sharp, you can come back on the show. What are you going to do for us over here before we uh, well, thank you for coming I, this evening? I, I, well, you see, I have all kinds of silly things, you know. Of, of course, even on your show, there are silly things. We do a lot know. of silly things. Well, I mean, I admire silly things on your show because then I feel how superior I am. Ah. I mean, so that pays, you okay. see. And then again, you see, this sort of thing. Now, you see, there is a very difficult uh, etude by Chopin. Mm -hmm. And the right hand plays on the black keys all the time. I see. And I just was too lazy to learn it. But you see, if you take an orange and run it on black keys, it comes out with no trouble whatsoever. Chopin originally wrote it that way. So, well, no, Chopin. It's called Fugue for Orange and Left Hand. He right. just strictly an apple man. Chopin could have lived to have heard that. 